All right, Scotty, this is your vintage Carvin X100B. Fresh off of a light recap to the power supply, actually a total resupply for the power supply. The high voltage one anyway. Um, I took care of one of the low voltage caps, which was physically leaking, as well as the bias cap, which should be done anyway. I resolved the sticky relay issue. Um, one of your pots I am unable to exercise noise from, at least from the very bottom of the range between zero and one, but who's gonna use that anyway? After judicious use of my preferred uh, cleaning chemicals um, and went pretty aggressive, still uh, no avail on the very bottom end of the movement. Everything else is completely quiet. There's some noise coming from your old original power tubes. I did find a crack in one of your screen grid resistors, which I will address later. But being that this is a bit of a budget uh, repair, I wasn't able to do everything I wanted to do, but we did get her up and running for you. And I'm almost tempted not to put my name on it, but um, you're a, a good customer and I wanna make sure you're happy and you got something to play through and she's reliable. So instead of um, spending the money on those cap cans, I created an array for you. I don't know if you can see it there. I'll give you another shot of that later. And then off in the background, you have your other preamp filter nodes, and I'll, I'll get to that as well. But um, I just thought it would be kind of interesting for people to see what that particular noise looks like on a scope. I'm gonna be uh, doing some probing, so I thought I'd just take a quick minute to show you how things typically work in a real world with this type of a tone stack. Now with everything on zero, from base all the way over to presence, there's no signal. But watch as I wind up the base. And obviously we're gonna adjust the trigger but there's that noise, watch. You see that? Watch this, let me put that down. That's a better view for you. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. Just take a peek. Get this up. You see that? You could probably see a little bit of crispiness across the line. I need to let some signal in through this base pot. That's the trouble. Look, it looks like, it, of course it resolves itself. There it is. But right there, whoop, on the bottom. You see that? Maybe I should darken this room up for this, but you can see it. So let me see if I can just clean up this signal a bit, put everything on five. There it is, everything's on five. That base control is really the inlet for your signal through the tone stack. Look at that, that's all the way up. We'll put it down. And the way Carvin has this set up, it's um, kind of a rip off of the old boogie stuff from the era where everything is truly cascading. Uh, your overdrive, now the LED is functional because we fixed that switch for you. The relay is fixed. It, it's truly, you have no signal until you wind up the rhythm volume and master. So you have a sequentially oriented gain stages that are cascading one into the next, a la Boogie Mark One, and maybe the Mark Two. I haven't seen that one in a bit. But there you have it. Let me see if I can clean up this sine wave a bit. Yeah, unfortunately, that noise I was referring to in the background, one of your tubes is exhibiting thermal runaway. That's red plating. Red spots. No, no, you're saying it wrong. Say it like this. Red, red, spot, red spot, spot, red spot, red spot, red spot, red spot. Red spot. Uh, the others appear to be okay, but these are your original tubes from the 90s, the early 90s. Or actually beyond. Um, I got to get this guy out of there. I'll investigate why, but for certain, that's no bueno. That's one of your screen grid resistors. I did measure it. It's still measuring fine. 
and the other ones don't have that seam on it. So I'll uh, update you soon, buddy. Oh, some might ask, why is your video disjointed? Don't you troubleshoot in any particular order? The answer is, well, yes, I do. The trouble is, you can't troubleshoot anything if the power amp is not stable. And it wasn't, but now it is. Bye. All right, Scotty, we have a two-conductor cable running off of your input circuitry. Going to the first stage. I was wondering why the volume was pretty low on this thing, comparatively speaking. Well, check this out. You have a two-conductor cable here again where the jacket is connected to ground. Watch this. You see that? This is broken. The center conductor is fine, but hold your ears. Watch this. That's it. Hold your ears. <laughs> Where's the damn conductor? At? There it is. You hear that? There's a little solder pad. just ahead of this resistor here that is not making contact you can kind of see it you see that see that broken bit right there pardon me oh my fingers but there it is on the uh the 11 o'clock see that little nub just floating around you see that there it is let's see if i can um remove this cable strip it down and fix this stuff up all right, well, we made a clean spot after doing that repair, as you can see. We have shaved her back uh, to right here. Uh, this is insulated up until this point. We have your new ground lead, your new signal lead, and then the shield is tied in right here along with this one, which I twisted them and then stuffed them into this eyelet. And there is, oh man, this board is just a disaster. Carbon just didn't care. That's a shame. And because of these little shortcuts they took, the, the owner is taking, uh, taking the toll here. So that's essentially it. Oh yeah, your sticky relay, which was uh, obviously this guy right here. Um, I resolved that by carefully popping off the cover and then deoxidizing the contacts there. We have good strength on, on the little electromagnet. Um, so there's no issues any further. Let's give her a test. Let me make sure I don't have any solder hanging onto the circuit board before I start running this little quick test. We'll take a quick listen. Man, my, my bench is a wreck. Let's zoom out for a second. Maybe it's best to look at this. Yeah. All right. There we go. And you can see the relay is no longer sticking. And if you guys want to see what a relay looks like, this is an old school relay. And you'll see it jump. You'll see those two copper colored bars in there. You'll see them jump. Check this out. See that? Up, down. See that? Awesome. Now, here's the test, the real test. All right. Master on 10, master on 10. Yeah, that's getting all the juice. Well, let's try the lead. You'll notice. This is a true uh, cascading gain situation uh, that I mentioned before, a little rip off a boogie, huh? And um, you'll get no volume because it's a cascading beginning with the clean channel. Watch. since you'll have two gain controls to play with and I think that's the trick with these amps so you'll have your master volume but 
this will serve as an overdrive. As an overdrive, I don't know if you heard that. So that square wave. Now your overall master for lead. Nice. There we go. So Scott, again, let me know what you want to do with the power tube, buddy.